and like I said, the the you know the, the a lot of in the restroom, the men's restroom, you know, certain ones where they had people that that was just like me, you know. And at the parks, I would pick people just like me, you know, or else I would watch. But um, I got to know some people, some friends that I would see, and I was still a Jehovah. This is when I was still a Jehovah Witness. So um, I this is yeah, this is when I was still a Jehovah Witness. And um, I would just like um, see them, just like maybe like six, six to eight different, just about six people. I mean, I was like one he one one week, one another week, but I still wouldn't do too much. I would just like it was just basically masturbation. It was just just the way I was. I, I was I never got into anything really really too much i mean at the end of my at the end of my um uh when at the end of my um marriage okay and when i i did do something with somebody but i used a condom and i told the, the brothers and i told my wife and i also told my wife about it okay but anyway now i'm leaving the organization after i left the organization i didn't I said it before, but now we're leaving the organization. I'm not talking about the organization. So um, I remember with my brother, my um, my brother, who I'm going to exp explain to you in the other one, he said, when I stayed at his house, because he wasn't doing well either, that's another story. And he said he knew that about me. He goes, I bet you did something with men. I go, yeah, I did. So anyway, that was exposed to him. And... Um, but then after that, um, I remember I would go to the parks and I had a, I would have a, I had a boyfriend. Um, this is after I left the Jehovah Witness, a very nice person, but it was, um, I had a boyfriend. He had, I remember he had a, he had a girlfriend. I mean, it was something else. And I remember, but like, I, and again, we never really did anything. I mean, I mean, not, I'm not saying we, to me, it was doing something, but as far as the norm, I mean, not the norm. I'm not going to say that, that what people do are norm is the norm. I'm not going to say what the norm is. Um, but I remember, um, I just remember, um, uh, uh, where am I at? Um, I was at some, I got to figure out exactly what story I was telling. Oh, okay. So I was after, it was after I left the Jehovah Witnesses. I wanted to say, I talked about my brother and how um, he knew. And then after I talked about my brother, I wanted to um, speak about um, more developments as far as my, my orientation was concerned. So I said I had a, a boyfriend. Okay, yes, I did have a boyfriend. He had a girlfriend. And I remember, and then I went to Atlanta. Or, I mean, I met him. I didn't know he had a girlfriend. And actually, I was separ separating. Oh, actually, I was married, to be honest with, with you. Um, and I remember meeting this guy at the park and um, taking my wedding ring off. I guess he noticed. I didn't know he noticed. But I didn't want him to notice. But then we did something. And like I said, I mean, we basically just masturbated. Even And we were in a deep relationship. Like the type of person I am, that was a big deal. Because it was like, um, it was like um, relationship was so much. It's like, you know, it wasn't. It didn't start from sexuality, from sex. It started from caring about the person. So it was it's like I'm saying, it's not exposed so much in the, I mean, in the media, this type of gay that I am, which is sad, but it's boring to a lot of people. So I was in a relationship with him, but I had to leave to Atlanta, Georgia. And I remember telling him I had to leave to Atlanta, Georgia. And um, he would fly to Atlanta, Georgia to see me. That's how it was. I mean, like I said, it's a certain kind of, and we loved each other, 
but it wasn't like um i mean we didn't do sex sex maybe if we kept on but it wasn't like we we never like entered each other or anything you know what i mean at that point you know so that's how what that's how basically I, I would do relationships with men i mean you know that's how i started out and that was enough for me because it was more like we were a relationship type i think if we would have stayed together we would have did something more but anyway i remember him taking me to a michael jackson concert and he had a girlfriend and um Actually, I was, like I said, I was married, but my wife was in, she visited her country. That's all in the earlier tapes. And um, I remember sitting in the back of the seat and she came in and we went to a restaurant and then we went to, to see the Michael Jackson concert. And I remember him wanting me to sit, um, let me see, I guess he wanted me to sit in the middle, okay? I mean, his girlfriend on one side, and I'm in the middle, and he's on the other side, and I wouldn't do it. I go, no, you know, I felt bad. I was like, you know, she has to sit next to you, you know. This guy was told we were to we were totally in love. I mean, we we loved each other. I know he really really loved me, and um, that's I mean, it was based on something like that. Anyway, we ended up. It was a bad breakup. I'm not gonna even talk about it. So anyway, so um, it was just really emotional, okay? Too much. So now I got to move on. So I had relationships like that, okay? Then I was a doctor. I met a doctor at the college and um, a regular doctor, physician, like very successful. And we had a relationship, but only he would, I was just, you know, disfellowshipped. And we were in the area where all the Jehovah Witnesses see me. And he, we would go everywhere. We would go to the store together and shop. Now I wouldn't mind. I would love it. But we would go to the store together and shop in the, in the grocery store. We would go to restaurants. We would walk in public. And I knew all the Jehovah Witnesses saw me. And I felt so subconscious. And we, he lived in like a condo, and I would go into the condo and wait in the elevator, and everybody would be there. Anyway, I was so subconscious because I was still, I was not, to me, I was not gay at all, you know what I mean? That's just how it was. This is going on a long time. So now you can see how I was, and I was still hiding it from myself. So I went on and on and hid it from myself, and, um, and through my whole life hid it from myself. I'm not even saying I was a closet. I hid it from myself. I remember, and then I went back to college and I ended up in Denver and I wanted to expo just be free with it in Denver. But then I got a job and nobody was exposed and I didn't want anybody to know that I was. And um, I didn't let anybody know. And I remember liking a, a girl at work. I think she kind of let on to me, but she just is like, you know, and I didn't want anybody to know. But I remember liking her and, some, and one guy who was like, you know, like I was, okay? You, we could pretty much tell when, I could pretty much tell when somebody's hiding it. I mean, when you're hiding it, you know other people who are hiding it, just like that. I mean, point blank. I mean, when you're hiding it from yourself. So he was hiding it from himself, but we ended up together. And I was so excited. And then with her, I wouldn't get that excited. I had to work hard to, to get excited. So, um, and I felt very uncomfortable. I mean, I liked her, but he showed me, he was showing me something that it's not going to work. But anyway, when I, then I came back to like the Washington, D.C. area. And... I used to, I, I, I always take classical vocalists, okay? And um, I want to say why I put God as a title to this too. The reason why I put God, because I knew that he saw everything that I was doing. I mean, you can't hide from him. But in my life, he was teaching me the things that I had to know to do what I'm doing now. I mean, he wanted me to do this, you know what I mean? 
There's no way in the world I could learn all of this without his help. But I stuck with him, you know, but I had a secret and I kept saying, what am I going to do about this? How are we going to do this? How am I going to tell people this? But this is how he did it. It was like, um, he put me in situ, I mean, no certain things. He put me in a situation to let me know if I was going to, if I was going to be honest with myself or not. And I think he wanted me to be honest with myself and that he loved me for the way I was. I mean, no matter what, you know, and that was the honest truth. But, um, cause should I say that story? I mean, it's going on, but it just has to go on. Okay, so I remember being in college one time and I had a professor. I think got such a situation up and I really liked this professor a lot. And it was so much that I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't hide it. Okay. So in class, all the students knew because the professor would do things because he knew I liked him. Okay. And he would do things. And like he would say, I know I'm very, I'm just ugly, you know, and such and such. And I would go, no, you're not. You know, it was like stupid things that I would do that everybody knew. And they would laugh and they would crack up. But I think God put that situation and let me to see if I would be honest with myself. And I was honest with myself. I just couldn't wait until that whole situation was over. But I exposed myself in that situation because I really, but I really loved this professor. So anyway, going on to like, I told you I went to Denver and I came back here. So I always was a, um, what do you call it? Um, a classical vocalist. I always took classical vocalists all the time during my whole life. And I remember, oh no, I have to put the Catholic in it. I, I have to put the Catholic in it first. So I'm not doing that story. I'm going to go back to Denver. At Denver, I got baptized Catholic. Okay, I knew God wanted me to be baptized Catholic. I'm trying to go fast because it's now 45 minutes. But I knew God wanted me to be Catholic. I just knew it, okay? And um, I had to be Catholic. But the funny thing about it is, is that I still was like, no, I'm not gay, you know? I'm not. And I, I really believed that. I really honestly believed it. And um, so I, I didn't have any problem going through this, the Catholic things and everything and going through the um, <clears throat> everything. Uh, it was so many things. And then I got baptized Catholic <clears throat> and I didn't have any problem because I wasn't gay. You know, I would go to the confession and tell my master baby because I, I never really like, I wasn't like the type to go out and do things with other people. Not that much. If I did a touch, I would just, you know, do little things. So I could say that in confession. And I knew that I wanted to marry a lady, okay? And I knew God wanted me to marry a lady. That's what I thought. I mean, you know. And I wanted to please the organiz I mean, the congregation, the, the Catholic, you know, because I wanted to be a Catholic. And I know Catholics were against it. So as time went on, I kept, you know, just hiding it and not doing anything at all. <clears throat> which was not doing anything at all. I could go to confession. I could do, I could partake of um, of the emblems and everything like that all the time. And <clears throat> however, as time went on, how did it happen? As time went on, well, I, I just kind of like, even though I wasn't doing anything, I just, I just ended up working a lot, okay? That's what happened. I ended up working a lot, so I stopped going to the to the mass and everything. So I would make mistakes every so often and go to confession and stuff like that, but I still felt I had to go to the confession because I was, you know, you know, like doing things. I mean, like masturbating with guys. I mean, you know, thinking about guys and stuff like that. And I would say it in the... Um, in my confession. I tell the truth in the confession. But anyway, what happened is, and I have to go on with this story until I'm finished with it. Um, so anyway, what happened after that was, um, I don't know how the tape is going to be. Oh, my dear Lord. Um, so, um, <clears throat> so where am I at? So, um, 
I went to this, I, I would always go to, um, how can I say, uh, I was a classical vocalist. And I would always go to, to you know, like train classical vocalists. And one time I had a, a voice, voice coach and he would always give me the game music, you know. And I was thinking, why is he doing this, you know. And, um, but I would do it anyway. So I would do his music that he wanted me to do, the game music. You know, like things that gay people would like. So then after that, I remember one time he, I sat down and he explained to me all these things, really nice things about me. And he explained to me a lot of nice things about me. And I really appreciated it. And he says I got it from God, you know. And I, it's not that he said it, but I could feel that he was like telling the truth. He said, you know, he pray, it's like he praying to God. It was like what I did, you know. It's like I knew God, you know, throughout my whole life. And um, he knew him and he was like, you know, it was almost like he was telling me how he was, how God was telling me how I am. A nice person, all this other stuff. So one time, this is like, I would go every week. And then one time he goes, do you know Elton John? Do you want to, um, I want you to do this song on Elton John. I go, oh yes, but I never like, I never felt comfortable with Elton John because, you know, he was gay, you know. And he goes, <clears throat> Elton John came out. He came out in such and such a time. I go, no, he came out actually twice. He came, I guess he came out as bisexual and then he came out as gay. And it was like, I could tell that, yes, he does talk to God. This guy definitely has a relationship with God. And it was like, God was telling me, think about it, okay? It's time to be honest with yourself. So after that, I remember after that one meeting, after that one um, um, lesson, the coach, as far as, you know, the, um, the classical vocalist, I just knew I had to do something, but I couldn't say gay. I could not say it. And I had to really face to myself and say, you know, it was just before I um, started doing the videos because I couldn't, I had to be honest when I'm on, when you're on social media, I couldn't be two people. And um, so then I remember after that, like I said, after that lesson, I really talked to myself and I remembered the time that got, that got set up this thing with this liking this professor. And I knew, I could tell when he was there and I could tell when God was setting up something and when he was just like looking and seeing what I was going to do. I could just tell, just like I knew that, that he was talking to this guy about me. You know, not about me. It's not in a bad way because he, just, there's no way in the world that I'm going to get mad because he he's telling this guy about me or whatever. Just I just accept everything that God does everything I mean I get upset sometimes and I'll tell him about it but that's just the way it is and then I knew that that if if God accepts and he did all of this he was telling me that I could be the type of person I don't have to hide anything but it's still hard not to hide so anyway so anyway so that's what I did I um I had to really get to myself and just look at everything that I did and everything I was. And I remember the thing with the professor was a breaking point to where I knew that it was that it was the right thing to do. And then I remember telling my I remember I couldn't say it. I couldn't say it. And then I remember telling my brother, um, I said, I tell my brother, he'll tell everybody. <laughs> Because he knows everybody, so I just, I just had to tell everybody because I knew that he would tell everybody. So I told, um, I went, I, Ronnie, I mean, he came to, one time, because he lives in Atlanta, and he came to visit me, and I said I wanted to talk to him. He said, I want to stop, I stop by. I go, okay, stop by, and I said, I want to talk to you. So we went into, I'm not going to, I'm not going to plug any restaurant. 
you know. So anyway, we went into that restaurant, and then at the end, like, I told him that, Ronnie, I'm gay. And he was like, what? And he didn't believe, of course, he doesn't believe me, but I know he couldn't wait to get on the phone. <laughs> and then I knew he had told everybody, and everybody knew. And then I remember going, because we had, I had to go to Atlanta, Georgia, because my niece passed away, and everybody knew. I didn't know what I was going to do, but then I was happy about just n knowing myself a little bit better, knowing myself better. Now, as far as God is concerned, like I said, the reason why I put God in it, because he, he let me know that it didn't make a difference who I was. <clears throat> he's trying he trained me i mean from the beginning everything that i know he trained first he wanted to know that i was going to be all right then he first he taught me who he was it took a long time to figure it out then he taught me that he was the one that protected me he's the one that's helped me through everything and then he taught me what he wanted me to do all those things intertwined together. And I did them, and he knows that I know what I'm doing. And he knows I do the job, and I do it right. And I make sure that he's satisfied with everything, because he's number one. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much.